It's super rare for a company to give you more while actually charging you less, but that's exactly what Apple did with the M2 Mac Mini. They essentially kept all the benefits of the M1 version. They added a more powerful processor and a few very other important upgrades, but there's still one thing about the new Mac Mini that frustrates me and then one thing that I want you to be careful about. Now, as far as what you get when you buy a Mac Mini, you get the Mac Mini, you get a power cord and, um, you get the box that it comes in. So that's pretty much it. Now, in terms of accessories, you'll need to add your own keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Now, personally, I love that because when a keyboard and mouse are included, that just means that you're paying for them. And if you know ahead of time that you want something like a mechanical keyboard or a more ergonomic mouse, then you just end up having to pay for that twice. Now, the super impressive thing about the M2 Mac Mini is that it starts at $599, which is $100 less than the M1 version was when it was released. And if you live outside of the US, let me know in the comments section where you live and what the M2 Mac Mini sells for. As far as the overall design, I'm a huge fan. I just love the fact that you don't need a big tower and that this little Mac, which shouldn't be confused with my Mac, Mac Studio, AKA Big Mac, this little computer is capable enough to run an extremely powerful setup. Now, of course, there are also MacBooks available with the same chips, but one advantage of the Mac Mini is cooling. Now, because we're not constrained by the super thin form factor of a laptop, there's more room for a large fan and then there's plenty of space for air to circulate. Now, we're getting two variations when it comes to the chip, the M2 and the M2 Pro. They're both second generation Apple Silicon, five nanometer processor. We're getting even faster shared memory than we had with the M1. The regular M2 chip, the one that most people should get, has an eight core CPU, a 10 core GPU, and it can be upgraded with up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. So basically, if you don't know that you need the M2 Pro, you don't need it. Now, the M2 Pro chip is really for users who need more unified memory because you can upgrade it to 32 gigabytes. It's for users who have more demanding CPU needs or they have workflows that can benefit from much better GPU performance and double the memory bandwidth. Now, there are two options with the M2 Pro, either a 10-core CPU and a 6-core GPU or a 12-core CPU and a 19-core GPU. So you're almost doubling the GPU cores of the regular M2. As far as CPU, you're getting either two or four additional high performance cores. But again, this is only a worthwhile upgrade for users who need even better GPU or CPU performance. So if you need to compile code faster, if you need faster rendering for video or smoother playback with motion graphics and then multiple four or 8K video streams, if you're producing music and you're running a ton of virtual instruments, or if you're batch processing a lot of photos in Lightroom, or if you're doing 3D graphics, for those types of things, it does make sense to look at the M2 Pro. But if you're a typical student or you're mostly working with web-based applications and basic Word docs and spreadsheets, then the regular M2 is plenty. Now, one other advantage of the M2 Pro is the ports. So the regular M2 Mac Mini comes with two Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a gigabit ethernet port, which you can upgrade to 10 gigabit for an additional 100 bucks. What's really nice here is that unlike with the M1 chip, you can run two displays over Thunderbolt, one at 6K 60 Hertz and one at 5K 60 Hertz. Or you can run one 6K 60 Hertz over Thunderbolt and then one 4K 60 Hertz over HDMI. With the M2 Pro, there are more options because you're getting two more Thunderbolt ports. So you can now run a total of three displays and this, could be a reason for someone to upgrade, but it's a pretty significant jump in price going from $599 to $1299. To be fair, you're getting double the unified memory and double the internal storage with the baseline M2 Pro. But still, it's more than twice the price if you're only upgrading for that one feature. And I would consider using Sidecar or Universal Control. And if you don't know about these features, you really should. And I'll link to these two videos at the end of this one. Now, the one frustrating thing about the M2 and the M2 
Ubuntu Pro is that we're still not getting any ports on the front. I'm used to the Mac Studio now and Apple clearly understands the value and convenience of a couple of Thunderbolt ports in the front and even an SDXC card slot. So even if Apple didn't add those ports to the baseline or the regular M2 version because they're thinking that the average user isn't connecting and disconnecting accessories on a regular basis, the M2 Pro Mac Mini should really have them because we're targeting a more demanding or a pro user who's much more likely to use external SSDs and might even be able to benefit from a built-in card reader. But who knows, maybe it's just me and I'm way off. So let me know in the comments section, like, are you cool with four Thunderbolt ports on the back or would you rather have two on the back and two on the front? What I do still love about the Mac mini is that I have both USB-A and USB-C ports. So I don't need any adapters, hubs, or new cables for any of my accessories. And to round off the rest of the connectivity upgrades, both the M2 and the M2 Pro models now support Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. But I want you to be careful when you're choosing a configuration, especially if you're looking at the baseline model of the regular M2. Remember that none of the M2 Mac minis can be upgraded later on. So whatever configuration you get is what you'll have for the life of the device. With unified memory, even if you only need eight gigabytes now, I want you to think about the next five to seven years and really consider whether that's going to be enough for you. If you're a super basic user, you're just checking email, you're browsing the web, you're streaming content, and you're using less demanding apps, it should work for you. But if you think you're going to potentially do more than that, I would consider upgrading to 16 gigabytes. With the internal storage, you have a little more flexibility. It's true that you still can't upgrade it, so you should still think about whether 256 gigabytes is enough for all the apps and files that you need on the internal storage. But here you actually have the option of getting an external SSD and keeping it connected to the Mac mini. And in that case, you could get a two terabyte portable SSD for less than it would cost you to add 256 gigabytes. And I'll put some links in the description to some of my favorite options. I also wanna point out that the 256 gigabyte model of the M2 chip still has the same issue with the slower read and write speeds, the same thing that we saw on the M2 MacBook Air and M2 Pro. Now, if you choose to upgrade the internal components on your baseline M2, Apple will charge you 200 bucks for every eight gigabytes of unified memory that you wanna add. Ouch. And if you wanna to go to 512 gigabytes of internal storage, that's another 200 bucks. The M2 Pro starts out with 16 and 512. So it has the additional $400 of upgrades included. And then you're essentially paying $300 more for the chip and the port upgrades. Also for very few users who need more than two terabytes, which is the max on the M2, the M2 Pro can actually go all the way up to eight terabytes, but that's gonna cost you an additional $2,400. So should you get the M2 Mac mini? Here's how I look at it. If you don't have any Macs or you have a MacBook and you're looking for an Apple desktop, the M2 Mac mini is a no brainer. It's tiny, it's super powerful, it's efficient, has plenty of ports for most users and it should easily last you for the next bunch of years. If you have an Intel version of the Mac mini, you already love the form factor, then again, you'll be super impressed with the performance bump on the M2 models and also you'll be really happy with how quiet the fan is. You can get the fan to turn on, but you really need to push this machine and you have to put your ear to the back to actually hear it. Now, if you have an M1 Mac mini that's working for you, then absolutely do not upgrade. Sure, you'll get a bump in performance, but not enough to justify the upgrade. One exception would be if you didn't get enough unified memory or internal storage with your M1 Mac mini, at which point I would say sell it, recoup some of your money, and then make the right choice this time. You know what I always say at the end of every video? And most users should only consider going to the M2 Pro version if they need better CPU performance, much better GPU performance, higher memory bandwidth, or additional ports and support for three external displays. Now you should check out Sidecar and Universal Control. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.